assalamu alaikum this is the lecture 8 of software requirement giving and in this lecture we are going to conclude our discussion of the particular subject of sre in the summer 2020 the contents of this lecture are the terminal task of the software requirement engineering process which is referred as the validation of the software requirement specified in the throughout process of the engineering process as you can understand the requirement validation is the concluding step in the requirement engineering process therefore it is uh, the verification of the requirements that will be implemented in the final software product and the requirement validation is the process of checking those requirements that these requirements should not contradict with the expectations about the system of various stakeholders that what they expect in the final product and they, uh, these requirements should not contradict with each other as well so if you look it uh, in the process in a very detailed way it is just not the mechanical process of checking documents on the other hand it is more an issue of communicating requirements as constructed by the analysts so back to the stakeholders whose goals those requirements are supposed to meet and all those other stakeholders with whose goals those requirements may conflict so it is more concerned with the uh, solution of conflicting requirements between stakeholders so at the end the requirement validation process certifies that the requirement document is an acceptable description of the system to be implemented and the solution proposed will really solve the problems of the stakeholders so requirement validation document should check a requirement document for the completeness and consistencies of the requirement that there is no ambiguous or uh, or left over requirements and it must also check the uh, document standard with the conformance to uh, specified standards or regulations by a regulatory authority or the uh, organizations you must also look to identify and remove requirement conflicts as well and also looking at the technical errors so if you take the bird eyes views of the checking of the conformance you have two steps uh, first you analyze the requirement and then you validate the requirement the requirement analysis phase was uh, done in previous few lectures and the analysis works with the raw requirements that you get from the system stakeholders these are not a process requirement and in these requirement you have uh, questions such as have we got the right requirement and you have to answer these questions in the analysis phase and then uh, in the same phase you check uh, a work product against the standards and conditions imposed on the type of the product and the business processes uh, and its development similarly requirements are verified by the analyst mainly in the requirement analysis phase on the other hand validation works with the final draft of the requirement document that is referred as SRS and with the negotiated and agreed requirements so the right question in this uh, phase should be have we got the requirements right and checking a work product against the high level work products or authorities that frame the particular product is the particular famous uh, particular aspect of this phase and requirements are validated by the stakeholders not the requirement analyst in this phase so the requirement validation process consists of number of inputs and two outputs in the requirement validation phase first input is the requirement document often referred as s or s and then you have some organizational knowledge that is also an input to the requirement validation phase and the specified organizational standards when you validate those requirement you get an output 
in the form of the problems and agreed actions which are the requirements that are satisfied and met by the each stakeholders goal so let's discuss the inputs and outputs in little detail the requirement document again is a complete version of the software requirement specification and it is not an unfinished draft so it must be formatted and organized according to the organization standard and secondly you have to input the organizational knowledge which is often implicit of the organizations which may be used to judge the realism of the requirements and you have to incorporate the organizational standards such as local standards for example organization uh, of the requirement documents and after inputting these uh, factors you get the output in the form of a problem list which is a list of a discovered problems in the requirement document and agreed actions which is a list of actions in response to the requirements problems and sub problems may have several proactive actions some problems may have no associated actions you can employ a range of requirement validation techniques however these five techniques are commonly used and we will discuss each in a brief way So starting from the requirement uh, reviews, we have certain kinds of reviews such as walkthroughs, pre-review checks, and requirement inspections. Then you can also validate the requirements with the requirement prototyping by developing a user manual and using model-based validation techniques and a testing-based validation techniques. Requirement reviews are the primary and mostly carry out. out or performed technique in the requirement validation phase so in the requirement reviews a group of people read and analyze the requirements and they can look for the problems and meet and discuss the problems and agree on actions to address these problems these are formally conducted in meetings and to create a requirement review uh, meeting you first have to plan the review in form of planning review items and you itemize these uh, reviews into a form of document and distribute this document to the review members and then prepare for the review and hold the review meeting and in the review meeting you will conduct the question and answers between the stakeholders and identify the problems and list of actions to be done and in the follow up you perform those actions and revise the document to meet the needs or to uh, identify and overcome the conflicts the requirement reviews result in a number of problem actions for example the reviews can be beneficial to find out the requirement clarification and the requirement may be badly expressed or may be accidentally omitted information which has been collected during the requirement elicitation therefore you can get the requirement clarification between in the meetings from different stakeholders you can also find out the missing information because some information is missing from the requirement document it is the responsibility of the requirements engineers who are revising the documents to discover this information from the system stakeholders you can also find out and remove requirement conflicts because there is a significant conflict between requirements the stakeholders involved must negotiate these requirements to resolve the conflict inside the review meeting and you can also encounter with the in unrealistic requirements so some requirements does not appear to be implementable with the technology available or given with the constraints on the system so therefore the stakeholders must be consulted in these review meetings to decide how to make the requirements more realistic 
to conduct the reviews you have to create review teams and divide them into certain uh, roles so review should involve a number of stakeholders drawn from the different background because people from different backgrounds bring different skills and knowledge to the review and stakeholders feel involved in the requirement engineering process and develop an understanding of the needs of the stakeholders therefore this will result in the better clarification and remove removal of uh, conflict and review teams should always involve at least a domain expert and 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 user to further clarify the problems and uh, comprehend the understanding of the requirement this can be done by creating a review checklist for different review items review checklist items can include the uh, items of for understandability so that the readers of the document understand what the requirement means so if there is uh, some impediment in the requirement therefore it can be analyzed and corrected in the requirement reviews you can also conduct a checklist for the redundancy that if your requirement document or requirements contained any redundant information or system features which can be removed with the consultation of the stakeholders in the requirement uh, reviews meeting and also you can create a review item for completeness and consistency such as removing ambiguity so in completeness uh, you check for to know any missing requirements or is there any information missing from the individual requirement description and in ambiguity you check that either the requirements are clearly defined using uh, articulate language without having ambiguous meaning you also check for the consistency uh, for the different requirements contradictions and if there are contradictions individual requirements can be eliminated or merged to different requirements organization of the requirements can also be a uh, item for review and in this uh, review item you check that the document is structured in a sensible way and the description of the requirement is organized so that the related requirements are grouped also you can check to the conformance standard that your document meets or do your requirements conform to the defined standards and any departures from the standards are justified traceability of the requirements can also be uh, identified in the requir requirement review checklist and in this uh, item you check for the requirement unambiguously identifications and it includes links to related requirements and to the reasons why these requirements have been included so in the requirement review process you can use a number of methods such as pre review checking walk throughs or requirement inspection so the first method you can employ is the pre review checking this is done before conducting the review meetings and reviews are usually very expensive because they involve a number of people which may be uh, spending quite a lot of time reading and checking those requirement documents therefore it is a good practice to conduct a pre review checking so as this expense can be reduced by using pre review checking where one person checks the document looks for straight forward problems such as missing requirement lack of conformance to the standards or typographical errors and documents may be returned for correction or list of problems distributed to the other reviews The second method you can do is the walkthroughs and a walkthrough is conducted by the author of the document under review who takes the participants through the document and his or her thought process it is much like a presentation of the document and this is done to achieve a common understanding and to gather feedback 
This is especially useful if people from outside the software disciplines are present who are not used to or cannot easily understand the software development documents. You can also conduct requirement inspections and inspection is the most formal type of the review. So it is usually led by a trained moderator which is not an author and the document under inspection is prepared and checked thoroughly by the reviewers before the meeting and comparing the work with the product with its sources and other referenced documents and using rules and checklists. So in the inspection meeting the defects found are logged. So here is a particular example of a problem in the requirements that there is a system called edit which will be configurable so that it will comply with the requirements of all UK and where relevant international copyright legislation and minimally this means that the software must provide a form of for the user to sign the copyright declaration statement it also means that the software must keep track of the copyright declaration statements which have been signed or not signed under no circumstances must an order be sent to the supplier if copyright statement has not been signed. So if you carefully review the requirements you can identify certain problems of incompleteness, ambiguity and standards. So first of all there is no information about the international copyright legislation that how your system is going to implement those international standards if the system is not or if the document is not maintained by a copyright UK law and you have to answer what happen if the copyright declaration is not signed there is no information that if the copyright information is not signed what will happen to the document or the system state and there can be other requirements such as using a digital signature and if a user uses a digital signature how it will be assigned in the system there is also ambiguity about the requirement that what does signing an electronic form mean is it a typical physical signature or a digital signature there is no description therefore this requirement leads to an ambiguous interpretation and you have to check for the standards that more than one requirement is specified and maintenance of the copyright is one requirement and the issue of the document is another requirement so the second technique for the validation of the requirements is the requirement prototype validation or validation by requirement prototype. So prototypes for the requirement validation demonstrate the requirements and help the stakeholders to discover the problem. In this way you develop a prototype and implement those requirements in the prototype and get the feedback from the stakeholders. So validation prototypes should be complete, reasonably efficient and robust. It should be possible to use them in some way as a required system. So user documentation and training should be provided to handle the requirement prototype. So in the requirement prototype phase, you choose a requirement prototype tester, develop the test cases and execute those scenarios and document the problems. So this slide provides a brief summary of the prototyping phase we discussed in the previous slide. So the initial step of the prototyping activities is the choosing a right prototype testers that who are going to use your prototype. And the best testers are users who are fairly experienced and who are open-minded about the use of the new system. Additionally, you can use the end users who do the different jobs and that different areas of system functionality will be covered in this way. Then develop test scenarios for those prototype users and 
in this activity careful planning is required to draw up a set of test scenarios which provide broad coverage of the requirements so end user should not just play around with the system as this may never exercise the critical system features then execute the scenarios and the user of the system work usually in on their own and try to the system by the executing the planned scenario and finally you document the problems it's usually best to define some kind of electronic or paper problem report form which users fill in when they encounter a problem so the third requirement validation technique is the user manual development and the writing user manual form the requirements forces a detailed requirement analysis and that can reveal problems with the document and information in the user manual contains a description of the functionality and how it is implemented and it also includes the parts of the system that have not been implemented and the requirement user manuals also help you to get out of trouble and it also lists down the installation steps and getting started with the system so another technique is the validation by the use of model based requirements validation of system models is an essential part of the validation process the objective of this validation is to demonstrate that each model is self consistent and if there are several models of the system and to demonstrate that these are internally and externally consistent it also helps to demonstrate that the models accurately reflect the real requirements of the system stakeholders and some checking is possible with the automated tools paraphrasing the model is an effective checking technique so you can conduct a simple model technique on data flow diagrams or other form of uh, use cases or state transition diagrams and you can conduct the paraphrase description of the diagrams to identify the errors so in this slide uh, we have an example of issue of a library card and we have a data flow diagram and a paraphrase description of the problem so the process shows that a person who wants to get some items issued and he is in the possession of library card so there are certain steps in which you go through in the data flow diagram to reach the final outcome so once the user asks for the uh, book issuance the user details is checked and if the user status is uh, a valid user the requested item status is checked and if the requested item is also available issue item is processed and the issue book is issued and the details is updated so there are certain paraphrase steps which are involved in each step such as check user check item and issue item so you can go through these steps on your own the final validation technique is the validation by testing based requirements so each requirement should be testable it should be possible to define tests to check whether or not that requirement has been met and inventing requirements test is an effective validation technique as missing or ambiguous information in the requirement description may make it difficult to formulate the test so if you are able to generate a test for all the requirement you have bound to have a quality requirement engineering or requirement specification document so each function requirement should have an associated test case that must check that what usage scenario might be used to check the requirement and thus the requirement on it own include enough information to allow a test to be defined that 
it is an individual requirement and there is no conflict between the requirement and it is is it possible to test the requirement using the single test or multiple tests are uh, required similarly could the requirement be restated to make the test case more obvious so to expedite the testing based requirement validation we can create a test record form which contains information about the test cases so it can contain the requirement identifier and there should be at least one for the each requirement it should also include some related requirement and these should be referenced as the test may also be relevant to those requirements and then provide a small description about the test which is the brief summary of the test and why this is an objective requirement test this should include system inputs and corresponding outputs and for that test you have to analyze the requirement problem which is a description of the problems which made the test definition difficult or impossible and finally provide some comments and recommendations which are advice on how to solve a requirements problem which have been discovered there is a sample test record form so after all these validation there are some requirements which are very hard to test and these are called hard to test requirements there can be some system requirements which apply to the system as a whole and in general these are the most difficult requirements to validate irrespective of the method used as they may be influenced by any other functional requirements tests for these requirements which are not executed cannot test for non functional system wide characteristics such as usability and there are some exclusive requirements these are the requirements which include specific behavior for example a requirement may state that the system failure must never corrupt the system database so it is not possible to test the such requirement exhaustively and again there are some non functional requirements such as reliability requirements which can only be tested with a large test set and designing this test set does not help the requirement validation so here are the key points that you should keep in mind while conducting the requirement validation or using any of the requirement validation technique so overall the requirement validation process should focus on the checking of the final draft instead of the unfinished draft and it should check for the uh, conflicts any omissions and deviations from the standards so once you are uh, in the requirement validation process you should identify the inputs and the outputs of the requirement validation process the inputs to the requirement validation process are the requirement documents such as srs organizational standards and some implicit organizational knowledge the outputs of this process are the list of the requirement engineering problems or requirement problems and agreed actions to address with these problems so once you get access to the list of problems and the list of agreed solutions you can employ different requirement validation techniques so if you conduct the requirement reviews which we discussed is a very expensive process you can minimize the review cost by reducing uh, you can reduce the uh, review cost by checking the requirements before the review for the deviation from the organization standards this may result from a more serious requirement problems you can also employ a prototyping technique which is an effective for requirement validation and if the prototype has been developed during the requirement elicitation stage
so you can also employ a model based technique and system models may be validated by paraphrasing items this means that they are systematically translated to a natural language description and finally you can employ a test based technique and designing tests for the requirements can reveal problems with the requirements and if the requirement is unclear it may be impossible to define a test case for it so overall the requirement validation is referred as a feedback link it usually communicates the requirements as constructed by the analyst back to the stakeholders whose goals those requirements are supposed to meet and all those other stakeholders with whose goals those requirements may conflict so with while the literature mentions more than dozen different requirement validation techniques all of them can be generalized into two the first is the reviewing requirements represented in the different forms and then translating them from a form to another form so you can conduct a different form of reviews which may be informal or formal and may use different reading techniques some known form for the representing and communicating requirements are structured text such as software requirement specification user manuals prototypes diagrams formal methods and test cases usually a particular form may be better understanding for some group of the stakeholders also just the attempt to of translating usually reveals some defects so this concludes that uh, the review or the inspections of any document may reveal different defects and which will help you to improve the quality of your product and remove any unessential requirements and decrease the cost of the development so by repeating the steps to improve the performance of the process and the product you are bound to have a high quality software requirement specification document as suggested by an author john ruskin that the quality is never an accident it is always the result of an intelligent effort so if you want to read more about the topic you can go through the chapter number 17 of the textbook that concludes this lecture if you have any question you can ask me thank you very much